all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave para peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is Sean Whittington's Paranormal Ministry Live 2.0. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church, recently ordained a deacon in the United States Old Catholic Church, and this very morning took my my uh, temporary vows in the Old Catholic Benedictines of Immaculate Mary. So God is laying a lot in my lap right now, and I love it. Um, real quick note before I go into, as Zach would put it, my spiel, <laughs> my opening spiel. I love that. I just want to, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of praying for just everyone out there that's sick right now. Everybody I know that's sick. Zach, God bless him, is hanging in there and going to, you know, wanted to do the show today, even though he's tested positive for COVID. Everybody, just about everybody I was with last weekend in Indiana for the ordinations. It's now reporting testing positive for COVID. I know other friends that have that have got it really, really bad and thinking about going to the hospital. So apparently COVID is deciding it wants to make a really big comeback this winter. So be careful out there, brothers and sisters. All right. Um, got a great show today, and you all are, you all already know that. That's why you tuned in. I love this guy. I really respect him too. He's a cool dude. So um let me check the prayer urn. I haven't checked that in a while. I have been out of town. Barb W. Hi, Barb, from Indiana. There you go. It's no coincidence I get a letter from someone in Indiana, and that's where I was this past weekend for my ordinations. Meant to be, guys. God is on the job. On the fence about God. <laughs> Okay, Barb, haven't met him or experienced a miracle. Everyone keeps telling me to get good with God before it's too late. Suggestions. Wow, this is a nice little letter, Barb. Um, obviously, God, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, or you wouldn't even have sent me this letter, this note. Uh, get good with God. Well, you know, this is what I'm going to tell you. Yeah, that's good advice. Whatever name you want to attach to it and however you want to pray to him, just pray to him. Make the sign of the cross. And just pray to God, ask him for the things you need and the and the things that you need help with and to just come into your life. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to offer up a prayer. You didn't ask for it, but I threw you in the prayer urn because I plan on offering a prayer up for you anyway. In honor of me recently entering the old Catholic Benedictines of Immaculate Mary, I'm going to say a prayer for you from the St. Benedict's Prayer Book. My newest favorite prayer, I say it all the time, and this is perfect for someone searching for God, and it is called Searching for God. So I offer up this prayer for Barb W. in Indiana and everyone else out there within the sound of my voice, Searching for God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh Lord, my God, teach my heart this day where and how to see you, where and how to find you. You have made me and remade me, and you have bestowed on me all the good things I possess. And still, I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you, for I cannot seek you unless you teach me, or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by loving you. Let me love you when I find you. Amen. Barb, keep me posted on your search. I'll light a candle for you, too, after the show. But stay in contact. All righty, let's check the ministry mailbag. The ministry mailbag is different than the prayer, and somebody asked me that the other day. Paranormal stuff usually comes to me here, and I throw it in there. The other one's all mostly faith-based stuff. Alan A. from California, just next door to me. Hi, Alan. I like to smudge. People tell me all the time, sages for conjuring. Thoughts? 
what do you use? Well, I disagree. It's all in the intent. Uh, I do use sage. I use sweetgrass. I use uh, a lot of Palo Santo wood. But sage is fine. I've got lots of bags of sage, too. Sage is fine. Just sit in the, in the intent. If you use it and conjure, then you're using it to conjure. If you're using it to change up the vibrations in your home and smoke out something that's a little malevolent or or spirits that are disembodied human spirits that are up to no good and you want to smoke them out, it's all in the intent and the prayers that go along with it and the things you say and how you use the sage. But if you don't want to use the sage, like I said, Palo Santo wood, Palo Santo a translation, holy wood, you don't want to use that. Use Palo Santo wood. Get yourself a nice little, uh, you know, a nice little sensor, a nice little incense burner, and buy yourself some uh, little charcoal brickets to go inside your sensor. And uh, what else should you be buying? You should be buying some incense, small little bags of ground up incense like frankincense and myrrh and if you don't can't find any of that you can get traditional frankincense and myrrh incense sticks get them blessed and just bring your incense uh, and you don't need a burner for that but if you get a burner you need the uh you need a, you need a you know the granulated bags full of granulated incense that you can spoon or just pour into your burner on your hot charcoal but yes, I, I find nothing wrong with sage at all. It's all in the intent, brother. Okay. Anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there to visit, remember, my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So trust me, brothers and sisters, I know times are tough. But if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, click on it and send my ministry in a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And trust me, we'll put it to good use. If you're having issues of a spiritual nature not attached to the paranormal, there's a place there where you can make an appointment to speak with me. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called Introduction to Spiritual Warfare Course slash Books. On that page, you'll find both my books, God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry, and God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry 2. If you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my books goes to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So it's a no-brainer. You get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals, too. How cool is that? You can get the book a little less expensive at Amazon. But if you get it off the website, it leaves my office here. I autograph it, and I put it in a beautiful house blessing kit. Speaking of house blessings and smudgings, it comes to you in a beautiful house blessing kit. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, scroll a little bit further down, and you will see the Introduction to Spiritual Warfare course. I offer, I'm the instructor, I offer a 12-week online college-level course Introduction to Spiritual Warfare. Um, and this is the course for all you true warriors for Christ out there that feel a calling and a longing to want to know, have more knowledge, let's say, when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up the fight of your life, if need be, against, God forbid, true evil, if it ever comes calling for you. This is the course for you. No, it's not going to teach you how to be an exorcist. That's a completely different calling. But it will teach you what I've experienced and what works for me in dealing with these things in terms of spiritual warfare and protecting you and the ones you love. What I've learned and seen and what works for me over the past, let's say, half a dozen years or so while I've been in this field. You can enroll in the course there at the website, or you can just reach out to me and talk to me about it before you make that type of commitment if you want to know a little bit more about the course. But I do have a Sean Whittington's Introduction to Spiritual Warfare Facebook page. If 
you want to go there and read a little bit more about the course, you can. All my students that graduate get a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed items that you can only get from yours truly. So most importantly, please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. Thank you. Okay, the moment of truth. Like I said before, I love him. I respect him. He's a cool dude. He is the host and producer and creator of Dark Fringe Radio, which has been around forever. I think last time I checked, they had like over 92,000 followers. I love his show. I've been on his show. Um, so I'm so pleased that he was able to come on my show. So without further ado, brothers and sisters, you all know him, you all love him. Let's give him a big, warm paranormal ministry family. Welcome to the one and only William Martinez. Good evening. How's it going, Rev? I don't see you yet. <laughs> oh, you don't see me yet. It's not coming through yet. Let's see. Hopefully it'll come through. Uh, you got your on. mic, your camera turned off? The okay, camera. now it's just me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, it was on just a second ago. Yeah, it was. We talked in the green room before we came out. Yeah, here we go. Hold yeah, on. Will, you may need to go out and come back in. Um, okay. I can let you back in, but that's uh, what you may need to do, unfortunately. That's okay. okay. I'll be let waiting for you, off. Will. You got it, buddy. See, there you go, guys. God laid a lot into my lap this last weekend, and you know who is still trying to throw a monkey wrench into everything I do. Last weekend, I flew to Indiana, and it was beautiful. I was ordained a deacon in the United States Old Catholic Church, along with a couple of other seminarians. One of the seminarians, at the, one of the deacons, was ordained to the priesthood. Then there was a wedding. Reverend Mother in our church got married uh, that weekend, too. So it was a really, really beautiful thing. You can go to the United States Old Catholic Church clergy and parishioners Facebook page and watch the film of the wedding if you want. Um, and if you don't belong to a church group right now and you've been thinking about that and interested, go to the, join up on that page. We welcome everyone. There he is. There I am. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Rev. I really appreciate it. It's, it's an honor, really. It Brother, is. thank you. for. I, I know you're probably one of the busiest people on the planet, and you took an hour out of your busy. No, that's you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take that. No, 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 no. Don't give me that. That's all you. I see how busy you are. You're a man who is on the run constantly. Congratulations to you, by the way, for last week, you know, the ordain, ordination and everything. That's just fantastic. I, I'm just ecstatic for you. You know, uh, congratulations. I, you know, continue on, my brother. That's all I can say. Thank you. And I know you mean that, too. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it was a very, yeah, uh, really. you know, my bishop told me it's going to put an indelible mark on your soul. And you can mm -hmm. feel it when it happened. And it was just, it was just a really... Um, you know, I, I, I can't, I don't even want to talk about it. Cause I'll tell you, well, one, I'm a cry baby and I always get emotional. <laughs> like, but two, it's like, you can't really put it into words going through something like that. And you don't yeah. want to use terms and words that are just inadequate in describing mm -hmm. the feeling. So we'll yeah, no, I can that, only, but. yeah, I can only imagine that's all I can say. I may be, well, they're, they're thinking in the spring we're going to have another retreat, and I, I may be ordained to the priesthood then and take my permanent vows in the um, old Catholic Benedictines of Immaculate Mary. But we don't know where that's going to be yet, and they, they're all excited about maybe all coming out here to Vegas, do not mm -hmm. hear, or maybe we'll go to one of the sisters' uh, homes in Colorado. We don't know where that's going to be yet, but that's going to happen in the spring of next year. So uh, we'll see what happens. But um just to go back on your uh, your <clears throat> mailback question from Barb, um, l let me tell you from firsthand experience, um, from somebody who's kind of gone over to the other side a couple times, you definitely want to make your 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 amends. So, uh, you know, good luck to you, and hopefully, you, you keep want in touch with the Rev. We didn't plan on this, and no. I what I love about you is you are an open book, and yeah. you and being in the business of, of podcasting you're a talker mm -hmm. i love that um do you want to do you want is there a story there that you might like to share i'm telling you brother right now i get in addition to your two near-death experience mm -hmm. uh experiences i've had mm -hmm. 
a couple myself. My wife's had several. Mm -hmm. Um, And I get so many people right now, especially now. I mean, I'm, I'm inundated with people feeling that there's a... These these are people that never believed before or believed, but never really took that step to join a church community that are just, they're getting this feeling. They don't know what the feeling is or where it's coming from, but they're getting this feeling to get good mm-hmm. with God or whatever mm-hmm. to them, whatever God is. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm intrigued by your statement. And if there's a story there that you would like to share with us about that, the floor is yours. Well, I appreciate it, Rev. Um, I really do. And yes, I've had a couple of different of uh, near-death experiences, but in my case, it happened to me when I was rather young. Uh, my very first one happened when I was at the age of uh, five years old. Uh, so it's a, it's a barely a memory in my you know my mind. Um, but um, you know, when my mom was still here on this earth, um, she's passed away since. Um, she recalled the story and um you know i was five years old i literally fell out of a third story window onto a first story platform so um oh god. god willing god willing um nothing happened to me <laughs> nothing happened to me Reverend. um you know sc- scrapes and bruises here and there but as far Is as that way behind breaking, your back some of your friends refer to you as bullet head <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's a, that might be right. That, that's that, that's that could be it. Um, but yeah, at that point on, um, I've had a couple other instances as well. Um, the second one, obviously, is the one I remember the most. Um, I was around seven, eight years old, and um, I actually fell out of a moving car doing about forty miles an hour. Um, this was back in the eighties. I'm a product, of, you know, child of the seventies, grew up in the eighties. So uh, you know, back then we didn't really have seat belts. I mean, there were seat belts, but they weren't uh, used as uh, often as they are now. And, um, you know, at the age of seven, I had that, you know, that experience, you know, falling out of the van, hitting the pavement, and then um, just cold. How old were you? Eight. Eight at the time. And just cold. I felt cold all of a sudden, you know, um, blacked out. And then um, oddest thing ever is that <laughs> behind us, was an ambulance that was not going anywhere. It was actually going back to the hospital. So it had just dropped off somebody and leaving and going back to its, uh, you know, its hub, I guess. And they were literally right behind us and they saw the whole thing happen. Uh, they literally picked me up right there, took me to the hospital again, Reverend, nothing, nothing. Um, they thought I may have had a concussion. Um, they did a bunch of tests on me. I spent about four or five days in the hospital, Um, but when I was out during that time, um, I do recall, um, being somewhere where I know that I've never been before. Um, it's almost like an overwhelming feeling, but then at the same time, it's not, it's almost like a sense of calmness and, um, peace. And I know that kind of sounds weird, but that's what it felt like to me. And, um, ever since that moment, things have been different for me. Uh, that's when I was able to start seeing different things. And I, I really do believe that people that do have these experiences in their lives are opened up uh, to certain things and are able to see certain things or, you know, um, whatever the case may be. But um, when I had that, that happened to me, it was just one of those things where I knew I was somewhere else. I could hear people's voices I felt people touching me. I couldn't see anything. That was the weirdest thing. Like, it was like I was stuck, almost like not there, but almost there, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, But it was a very profound moment in my life. And, um, you know, I think you're spiritually, your soul gets in this void. And I think mm -hmm. there's people deciding what we're going to do with this soul. Mm -hmm. I think there's actually decisions made whether they're going to allow you to cross or send you back mm-hmm. or um I, that's what i believe and so i think yeah. that you're like in this what you were experiencing was being in this uh spiritual void and there were actual people well you obviously know you have somebody up there looking mm-hmm. out for you but you have yeah. these people and you're hearing this conversation going on you're having literally angelic beings discussing the discussing what's going to ha- what they're going to do with your soul. Mm. 
Mm. That's what it felt like. I, you know what it almost felt like? It felt like being in a room of people and then like um, people talking to you and then kind of like moving you along like this with your, you know, their hand on their, on your arm. Okay. Like onto the next person. Okay. This way, go over there, over there. So it felt like that. And, um, you know, ever since that moment, ever since when I snapped out of it and, you know, I, you know, I, I was in the hospital and I realized what happened, um, things have been different in my life. And I've always gravitated um, to, you know, the spiritual side of things, you know, supernatural, paranormal and all that stuff, um, even from that age on. Uh, and that's when I started seeing things. I, you know, I, I've actually seen um, spirits and things of that nature growing up uh, from that point on. And it's, it's changed my life, I think. And I'm not sure for what purpose it is, but um, what I do is I, you know, I've come out with this podcast with seven years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to put all this knowledge that I've kind of put together throughout the years and, um, you know, kind of put it out there for other people to share and, um, you know, maybe talk about it as well. But, um, and maybe help them as too, you know, because, you know, when all this stuff happened to me when I was a child, there was really, you know, nobody really talked to me about, hey, you know, this is what happened. You know, did anything, you know, happen while you were out? There was no talk about, you know, you didn't go to therapy in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was no therapy. There was no, you know, so, uh, you know, going through all that um, as a child, I think, you know, and not really having any kind of guidance as far as that's concerned uh, when it comes to what you've may have experienced and stuff like that. Um, you know, it can really throw you for a loop. And so, you know, I've really gravitated to a lot of different religions um, just to learn about them. Uh, religions always, um, you know, piqued my highest interest um, just to learn about what they, you know, what the, the, the crux of, you know, each religion is and, you know, you know, what the, 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 the things that they believe in and, and, and the different ways they believe in things as well. So to me, it's always been an interesting topic for me. And, um, you know, I used to do Bible study when I was in middle school just to learn about different things like that. Uh, I was in a, uh, a Presbyterian church doing that. And, uh, you know, they would kind of venture out a little bit into talking about even very, you know, occultish type things as well, which I was surprised at, that, you know, at that age, because that's the stuff that kind of like drew my ire and my attention, too, because it was just like stuff that people don't talk about. So um, it was, you know, it was a really interesting childhood growing up and trying to like figure out and navigate the waters of, you know, religion. And um, I remember at one point um, when I was growing up, you know, accepting Jesus Christ into my heart and, you know, and, 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 you know, going through all that and feeling those emotions and, you know, knowing what that was about. Um, but it really kind of set me up to be who I am. And it set me up to be th this person who has had a lot of different experiences and a lot of different things and now being able to share it with everybody else. That's incredible. Um, yeah. You know, when you were talking, I kept thinking of that story. I mean, you were you were, you were interested in so many different, just religion in general and mm -hmm. different faiths and what that's all about. And that's mm -hmm. a very healthy uh, approach to it all, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking, do you remember that series that was on? I know for sure one season, maybe mm -hmm. two, maybe mm -hmm. even more. But it was hosted by um, oh, the actor. I can't remember his name. Uh, I believe it was on Discovery Channel. It was called Searching for God. Mm. Mm. And there was a famous actor who was who would travel around to mm -hmm. many different areas of the world and explore that the, the, the big religion at that area of the world, wh wherever it may be. He may go to India or Israel or Germany mm. or wherever else he may go. And he would meet with somebody um, and he would they would discuss in depth. Mm -hmm. that whole religion uh mm -hmm. that religion religious belief system and i i wish i could remember the name of the actor but do you remember that series i think i vaguely remember it i don't know who that the 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 main person i've seen that about. actor in everything i haven't seen him in any <laughs> he's much older now okay. um and i've seen him in everything and i can't um I just can't remember his name right now, but no, that was, but that's exactly me. That's what I, I love to do. I love to figure out different things about religion, different types of religion. It's always interested me. I mean, I've been exposed to so much stuff as a young child. I mean, my mother, for instance, she, um, God rest her soul. Um, you know, she Morgan she Freeman. Around. 
Oh, Morgan Freeman. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> no, I no, it's if fine. I didn't say it then, I would forget <laughs> It'll never come out. Right. Um, you know, my mom, God bless her, she um, she exposed me to a lot of different kinds of religion uh, throughout my childhood. Um, you know, growing up young, young, it was more of the Catholic side, you know what I mean? And, and, and that, you know, old school type structure. And then things changed, you know, things changed. And, you know, she got into, um, you know, um, Jehovah's Witness for a while there uh, for a few years. So I was exposed to that. Then I got into Presbyterian Church, got exposed to a lot of that stuff. And then, um, you know, just jumping from different religion to different religion. And then my first wife, she was um, from uh, Trinidad. So I got, actually got married in the Hindu religion. So I was exposed to that. So, I, you know, for me, I love all these different aspects of religion. Um, but like what you said earlier, to go back on what you said uh, to um, about, I, be, I believe, the, the mailbag or the other gentleman you were talking about earlier. It, you know, it doesn't matter who or what you believe in, what you call it. As long as you believe in that higher power and you have faith in it, I think that's what's the most important thing because, and you think obviously the right and wrong thing, obviously the aspect of things as well, but having that faith, I think is the most important thing in people's lives. I really do. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. My wife's had several near death experiences mm -hmm. and uh, I have had two myself. Mm -hmm. The two earlier ones, one when I was a, a young kid drowning at the beach, I saw my guardian angel who helped me. I was in a, stuck in a really bad riptide, and she actually helped mm -hmm. me swim a certain way and guided me back onto the beach. Mm -hmm. And then later, I was about, I had was really drunk. I was went through uh, 20 years of being a raging alcoholic and drug addict, so I was actually about to drive off. I passed out at the wheel on the mm -hmm. freeway, and I was about to drive over a cliff. And she was the same girl was in my passenger seat and woke me up and made me veer off. I still got in a bad car wreck, but I lived through it. Mm. And then the third one was as a result of an extreme demonic attack while I was at this case. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think I heard her voice, which snapped me out of basically just kind of realizing, you know, there's nothing I can do to fight this. I'm getting drugged to hell. I'm just going to, you know. I, I had no choice but to go with it. It was her mm -hmm. voice which snapped me out of it, and I started praying. But this is a two-part question for you. I believe that everybody mm -hmm. that goes through those types of things, I agree with you 100%. We look different now to the spirit realm. Um, we we just do. It is what mm -hmm. it is. And that's why many people that have gone through what we go through now see spirit, communicate with spirit, have these types of paranormal experiences that uh, many other people haven't had. Mm -hmm. um, address to me your thoughts on guardian angels mm -hmm. and then address to me that this theory that we look different and that's why after going through what you've gone through, you now seem to be a magnet for spiritual contact. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question and uh, I'll tackle the first one. Um, as far as the guardian angel thing, um, I really do believe that exists. Um, you know, if, there's been instances in my life where if I had made a different choice in a certain situation, um, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Um, but to be able to recognize these things, I think is very in instrumental as well. Um, yes, they do exist. I believe 100% they do exist. And I think they... I think they show themselves to people who are going to be an instrument for them in other ways later on as well. So what I mean by that, in your instance there, Rev, when we talked about how you had that experience, you know, now look at what you're doing with your life. You know, you've completely changed your life. And because of that, uh, that instance, uh, those two instances that you had with your guardian angel, um, you were able to, first off, recognize it, number one. Number two, completely change your life, which is exactly what, um, you know, your guardian angel wanted you to do. And now you are paying back. Now this is what you're doing. This is what you're giving back. This is what you're meant to do. And that's what I believe. That's my personal belief. Um, you know, others can be, believe whatever they want, and that's fine. But um, when you have that exposure to your guardian angel and you recognize it and you can see it, and you know something's there, then that's when you have to kind of like 
pay it forward or pay it back, I believe. And by doing good deeds, by helping people, um, you know, by being a good person, I think that's very important. Um, helping your brother, your sister, whoever you can, uh, whenever you can. And um, I think that part of the, 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 the guardian angel thing is for you to also be a guardian angel for somebody else in their life, because you see that to yourself. You, you, you felt it yourself and you've experienced that, you know, you can do that for somebody else. And you can also recognize that when somebody else is in, let's just say not in a good shape or state uh, of mind, whether it be, you know, they're into drugs or alcohol or whatever the case may be, um, you know, you are able to recognize it and also maybe lend a helping hand and say, hey, listen, I've been there. I've experienced it. You know, I understand where you're at. This is what you need to do, because sometimes these people can't recognize their guardian angel. Sometimes their guardian angels right there and could be banging a pot in a pan, you <laughs> yeah. know, in, in the different realm. And then you're just completely oblivious to it because, you know, they're the, in the state of mind that they're in, you know, whether it be, you know, in a, in a, in a drunken state or, you know, under the influence of whatever the case may be. But sometimes you need to help them understand that there is that that garden angel there. So I hope that answers that part of the, the, the question. Absolutely. Um, but the second part I think is, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think when you get exposed and once you get, uh, you, you peel that, that the veil and you see over the other side and you, you've, you've been through that, that, that side and you've been touched or whatever the case may have been stained or touched or whatever the case is. Um, you are under attack constantly. I feel like that. Um, and whether you uh, whether you could recognize it or not, um, it's happening. It really is. And, you know, I, I believe everybody is to a certain extent. You know what I mean? But for those that actually have been exposed, it's like they can see you even more. And um, that's when I believe that that's when you have to kind of make a choice in your life, whether you're going to be a person who is going to um, perpetuate that negativity and in, in your life and around others in your life, or you're going to be a positive influence on yourself and others. So I think that's where um, people kind of go in this divergent. You know, you just go this way. Some people just, you know, say, F it. I'm just going to be this. I'm going to be this negative person. I don't care, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Nobody cares about me. I don't care about anybody and da, 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 da. And then have that type of attitude. Versus somebody who, you know, is exposed, knows they're exposed, and then say, hey, listen, you know what? This is going to suck, but I got it. I got this. I got this. And you know what? On top of that, not only do I have this, I want to help other people as well. And that's where I think the difference is between those people uh, that have been exposed to the other side. It's whether you decide to continue that dark path or go to the light and start helping people. Well said. I, I have to say, I'm sure they're out there, but I mm -hmm. personally, and I've met a lot of people that have had near-death experience experiences or have seen what they believe is their guardian angel or really feel they've been helped by theirs. I haven't met one of these people who don't just have a completely, uh, you know, wonderful approach to life mm -hmm. uh, and are just really friendly people. And, you know, they may not uh, call it God, but they believe in a much higher vibrational power of love and light that watches over us. And now here's the flip side of this coin. Spe you know, speaking of dark fringe radio, which we're going to mm -hmm. get into that, there's the dark side that comes with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really, really experience it, you know, being clergy. Um, I'm a big target, mm -hmm. but you're also look different to them. Mm -hmm. having kind of been exposed to that other side of the veil and then whatever the decision was made to put you back here. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're, we're all targets anyways, but I believe that those that have survived near-death experiences um, and due to divine intervention or, you know, angelic, you know, intervention, what have you, you're, mm -hmm. you're brought back you're you're even that much more of a target so i don't know because you and i've never had this discussion but have you felt that side of it and realized that's exactly what's going on here and i need to fight that 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I've been in situations where um, I can tell when something's going to happen um, kind of ahead of the time, if that makes any sense. Um, and I know not to be there. Remove myself from the situation as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, I, I really do believe that um, you get those signs. You get the signs. You, you, you've been exposed. But that's also your calling, I believe, too. That's your calling. That's what you're dealt, and that's what you got to do. Um, but yes, absolutely. You are exposed to it. You see it. Um, I've been on some investigations, um, one late just recently, and we can get into it in a little bit as well. But, I did. Um, see, that's we, you and I are already <laughs> psychically connected here because that yeah. was I was already going to lead into that because that was something I didn't know about you. I didn't know you did paranormal mm -hmm. investigations. Yeah. yeah and I, just, yeah. And I, I stalked you a little bit this past week, and I went up to your website, and I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you about this particular case I saw there, but go ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't get out too often, but when I do, I try to do it as, you know, serious as possible. And um, yeah, in my last investigation, we, um, you know, we, I felt something very negative and we were picking things up on the spirit box that was nasty. I mean, things that I can't even repeat on this podcast. I mean, nasty, um, you know, and this is um, from an area that we decided to go to out in the middle of a park. Uh, this was a tree. Um, they dubbed it the devil's tree. <laughs> That's what uh, I was asking you about. <laughs> uh, the devil's tree. And um, let me tell you, Reverend, this was a pretty, it's, you know, it's really weird because you know, I've lived in Florida all my life and I'm, I'm used to being outside and I'm used to like, hearing animals, you know, birds and things like that, you know, chirping and things like that all the time. Right. That's how it is in Florida. This place out in the middle of pretty much a park in nowhere in Florida um, lies this tree that they've tried to cut down and burn and remove it. They can't. Um, and once you get to it, the silence, the silence, it takes over. It's like almost being like in a box with no noise. You hear nothing. You hear no nature. You hear no birds. You hear nothing. It's almost like a void. It really is. Um, and to tell you the, the story behind this, this tree and what, what it represents and why we went down there in the first place was um, back in the 70s, in the early 70s, we had a case down here of they dub it Florida's first serial, serial killer. But um, there was a man named Gerard John Schaefer. And this gentleman was an actual sheriff. He worked for the sheriff's office. He was a patrolman. He was a deputy. And um, <clears throat> he actually ended up being Florida's most notorious serial killer from the 70s. And how that became is because he would pick up hitchhikers on the side of the road and then have his way with them and then strangle them and hang them from this tree with wire and all this stuff. And basically abuse these people, these women uh, that were hitchhikers. Um, and so you have to remember time and place, the 70s, there's no cell phones, there's no internet, you know, these women will go missing and nobody would ever know. Um, you know, he would usually pick them up in two counties over and then dispose of the bodies two counties over there that way as well. So there was very little correlation to how to catch this guy. Um, but they eventually did catch him because he did uh, end up uh, taking two women uh, and tying up to this tree. And um, as he was getting ready to kill them, uh, he got a call over his radio <laughs> subsequently. And so the call was to come back to the station that there was something going on. So he had to leave the women there alive, and then he said he would be back. Uh, and so he left, and then as he left, the women escaped. And so where did they end up escaping to and running to? The sheriff's office. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can't make this up, right? Yeah. So um, they get there. They tell the, you know, the, the people there that this is what happened. He's like, oh, I made a mistake. You know, it was just something to scare the girls, which was all BS, obviously. Um, so they started unpeeling the onion and they found more and more bodies there. Eventually um, convicted the man, sent him to prison for, I believe it was four or five life sentences uh, because two others came up, uh, two other bodies came up after while he was, uh, you know, uh, being investigated already at that point. Uh, end up going to jail, ends up dying in jail. Another inmate kills him in jail, believe it or not, because he wouldn't shut up about the things that he did, literally. Uh, and I, to me, it's so unfathomable evil that how you could do something like that, number one, but then number two, just to talk and, you know, brag about something like that over time. You know what I mean? It's just to me, it's so unfathomable. It's out of my head. I can't even put my wrap my head around it. 
But um, yeah, this gentleman ended up, you know, going to jail, going to prison, getting killed in prison. But there was a very, very big mark that was left on this area because of him. Um, and then just as recent as two years ago, they found another body that's tied oh. to him. Yeah. So this thing keeps unraveling more and more and more. Um, you know, this is a, a very, very crazy case that happened here in Florida. And I tell you what, uh, Reverend, um, that tree is not good news. It is. You feel the negative energy. It sucks the batteries out of our investigation. We're out there and we haven't recorded that. It's fully charged. New batteries that I bought right out of the case. Put them in there. And I've already known the second time I went out there, I already knew we needed extra batteries with it because it happened to us again sucked all the battery out of um, out of all half of our equipment um we got some very interesting evps out of there um you know i got very aggressive with the you know the spirit that's there because I, I really do believe he's there in my heart of hearts i believe he's there because that kind of evil i don't know if that could be that's gonna be his purgatory right yeah, but I think he's so not too. even he's below purgatory he's in hell but that's gonna yeah. be his hell too to right. have to yeah I, yeah, I suspect Zach may have a question for you. Yeah, I just got a real quick question, and you guys were talking about targets, okay? Which one is more likely to be targeted? Someone of the cloth, like, uh, you know, oh, oh, big daddy Sean there, um, an innocent <laughs> child or somebody who provokes, which one is more of a target? That's a great question. I'm going to go, oh, my God, I think I don't believe in religious provocation because I know when I show up to a case, um it's pro uh, it's provocation enough i see a lot of these ghost hunters go into these cases and they do you know uh, it's like they're picking a fight they're going out of their way to try to pick a fight with this malevolent entity that can just chew them up spit them out or swallow them and you know what them out oh, yeah. um um i believe clergy like me are probably the biggest targets and I've felt it the closer and my bishop told me I would experience this, but I've had, and, and he was right. The closer I get to the priesthood, the more I feel uh, the negativity, just really trying to just beat me over the head all the time. Uh, so you got to stay strong children. Like I work a lot of cases where I'll ask the people ahead. of Well, number one, they tell me in their intake form, you know, my child is the primary target here. So when I go there, I know that if, Whatever's there gets provoked enough just by me being there. They're going to go after the animals and the children. So I usually have the families remove the kids, send them to a, a neighbor to spend the night, board the dog, board the cat at the, their vet overnight while I go there to do what it is I do. Um, so I think children would have to be a close second, mm -hmm. uh, but their innocence in a way protects them a lot too. And then I forgot the third one that Zach said, the provocation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I and so many of these ghost hunters call me up. They were at the wrong place at the wrong time, said and did the wrong thing, <laughs> did a lot of provoking. Now they have an attachment. They need help. Mm -hmm. And many of these ghost hunters have no religious belief system until they need one. Mm -hmm. You know, they they don't believe in it. You know, they believe in these malevolent beings, but they don't believe in a higher power. Um, they, they learn to, to regret that and to uh, eat their words when it comes to, I don't believe in God. And now they're asking someone like me for help. So what do you think about that? Where would you line that up? Yeah. Listen, I can't speak for, you know, the men of the cloth because I'm not a man of the cloth, obviously. So, um, only you could speak on that. Um, so, but yes, I would say children are the first ones that usually are, um, affected because of the innocence of the children. Um, you know, an innocence of a child is very, very uh, malleable and, um, you know, they will take advantage of that. And, um, you know, next thing you know, they're doing something that um, maybe some other people would not normally do <laughs> because, of, you know, being a child, you know what I mean? So I think a right. child is more susceptible to that than than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's kind of what I was wondering. I, I was wondering if maybe it was the naivete of the child that really opened them up and. Mm -hmm. You know, because a, a child's going to do things that aren't, uh, you know, that, that well, they're not going to know any different. You know, right. they're going to play with Timmy the ghost just like they're going to play with Timmy the next door neighbor. Right. So, right. I mean, how would they know? So well, right. while I have you, Zach, real quick, I, I and speaking of children, I saw Adrian's post about 
the new baby. Talk, talk to us. Some, yes. Talk to us about the new baby real quick. Uh, we have a new granddaughter. Her name's Paisley. Uh, congratulations. She's, uh, she's um, battling a little bit right now. Um, had, uh, had a little bit of difficulty, but uh, they're doing uh, everything they can. Um, they're doing great. You know, they're doing, they're doing good. They just got to watch the, um, I just got to watch the blood sugar, believe it or not, uh, wow. of this of this child already. So um, they've got, uh, you know, um, it was uh, it was a little touch and go yesterday. So <laughs> it was a it was a hard day, um, a long night, and then of course, you know, waking up this morning and testing and finding out I got COVID again. Thank golly for that. There you so, go. You know, <laughs> well, but, when we're uh, done here, yeah. I'm. I just saw her post right before we went live, so I will light a candle for Paisley and her mother, and, uh, Thank and you. I'll keep yeah. them in my prayers for sure. Yeah, it'd be great. You know, beautiful little girl. She's big. She's strong. She's, of course, you know, just a good-looking kid, and and uh, you know, takes after her mama. That's for sure. So very cool. Mm -hmm. but very cool. Thank you, you for that, and thank you for the answer, Will. I appreciate that. No, uh, we did have a question here um, that I got to, uh, I want to, um, Allison Payne says, I see children's spirits. Don't they go straight to heaven when they die? I'm going to jump out there and say, I would like to think so. Um, so. A lot of these children's spirits you see, Allison, might not really be children's spirits. That seems to be the number one thing the demonic like to do is, is, in tricking people is approach as a child spirit. But I would like to think that the child children are just so innocent, whether they really know, have been able to make a decision what they do, what, you know, uh, over what happens or not. I believe that that innocence gives them a protection that, that we may not have. And, and I believe children, uh, their guardian angels swoop them right up, but we'll, we'll, we'll all know the answer one day. Um, yes, we will. What do, you, what do you think on that topic? That's a tough one for me. Um, you know why, Rev, is because even going back to what I'm talking about earlier, the, the investigation, you know, I was um, I was trying to see if I can get any answers from the women that were victim, you know, to to him there. And I, unfortunately, I did get some voices and, you know, I would shudder to hate to think that the, the fact that maybe their souls are trapped there. Um, and they shouldn't obviously be there, um, you know what I mean? Because such a horrific thing has happened to them. But um, as far as what you're talking about children, um, that's a, a weird thing for me because uh, <laughs> the first uh, you know, uh, thing that I've ever saw in my life that was a, a shadow figure was a shadow figure of a child. And, um, you know, I would like to say that, that it was a kid, but I, I'm, I'm with you on this one, Reverend. I think that you may be looking at something that looks like a kid, but that's how it's showing itself to you. It's not uh, exactly what you think it is. Well, you know what I want to do before we run out of time? Oh, my gosh. I can't believe 50 minutes has already Already? Here. Wow. Well, <laughs> I want to make sure everybody knows how to see you, how to reach you. I know you've got a wonderful mm -hmm. Dark Fringe Radio Facebook page. Yep. You've got a really, really cool darkfringeradio.com website. Mm -hmm. Then you have the show. Talk to me about how the, such a successful podcast. Like I said, I just Thank just you. checked the other day and saw over ninety two plus thousand followers, mm -hmm. and you're everywhere with the show. Tell people how the show came about. Tell them where and when they can watch the show, and mm -hmm. if there's any what you see the future for Dark Fringe Radio may be. Mm. Well, that's a great question. Thanks, Rev. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, Dark Fringe Radio. Um, this was uh, kind of a labor of love for me. Um, I started it with my best friend, Jay. Me and him have been best friends since the age of 10. <laughs> so, uh, you know, over 40 years. Yeah, he was the one that called you bullet head. I yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so over 30 years with this guy. And, um, you know, we know each other pretty well. So uh, we decided to come out with this podcast. I decided to come out with this podcast. I asked him to come along with me for this journey he has. And, um, you know, we really have, you know, grown this organically for the last seven years. And, um, you know, we talk about everything. Um, we, we leave no, no, no stone unturned. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about everything from the paranormal to the conspiracy to true crime. You know, we, we get into a lot of that. A lot of the true crime kind of, you know, bleeds over to the paranormal a lot as well. So, um, you know, we talk about a lot of different subjects, you know, 
we've had you on. I mean, you're you're always a great guest. And, um, you know, we talk about a lot of the you know questions that you may have that you, you know, you would like to have the answer to or at least have another opinion uh, about and, you know, talk about. So, um, you know, thank God we've come out with this platform. It's, you know, everywhere you can catch us um, every Saturday, uh, a new episode. Try well, We try to get a new episode out every Saturday, but this Saturday we do have another episode coming out and we actually are talking about the most wicked women in history. And so we're going to be talking about Elizabeth Bathory and um, another lady that I cannot remember her name at the tip of my tongue, but she was known as some soap lady of Wales, but she was using people's body for soap. So it's a wild story. So, um, yeah, we, we all right. Lot you're, of, you're yeah. going to talk to Elizabeth Bathory. I'm in, <laughs> that is such a fascinating story. Oh, it is. It is. That it one is. is, I mean, it's gruesome, yeah. but it is a fascinating story. So it is, it is. So, you know, things of that nature, this is what we talk about. We love that stuff. And, you know, uh, we try to talk about the nice side, side of things as well. Um, and, um, yeah, you can we're check gonna, us out every Saturday. Yeah, but you're everywhere. I mean, yeah. where, where where would you recommend people go to, to uh, watch? If you want to watch, you can go to YouTube uh, right there at Dark Fringe Radio. Um, just forward slash Dark Fringe Radio. You can catch all our episodes there. Also, if you want to listen to us, you can catch us on every streaming platform available. Uh, exclusively on Spreaker, if you want to go there and support us there, that's great. I appreciate it there. Uh, but our website is probably the best place to go where you can kind of, that's the, the normal hub there. And you can kind of, navigate where you want to go um that's darkfringeradio.com everything's right there for you and you know i do know something about you um, mm -hmm. uh oh you uh, are a, a big fan of of paranormal yeah horror mm -hmm. and true crime and mm -hmm. you got all of that in that one case yes i the did case yeah at the, at the devil's tree is all of that in there which i it think is. is very cool um and you can go to the website and we actually have uh the the um, the spirit box sessions that we uh, had there, all the 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 you know all the stuff that we got from the responses and everything there, all that is just on there. Go ahead and check it out, please. Well, I know you're in Florida, and I also mm -hmm. know with the following that you have, have you ever thought about? Everybody wants to go to Florida, whether it's to live or visit. Have you ever yeah. thought about doing a dark fringe radio paranormal conference or gathering uh, event there, and where you're at? I have been thinking about something like that. Um, that's something probably later on that just going to take a lot of organization to do something like oh, that. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, that takes a lot of effort. I've, I've known people that drive that in the past and it's a really a lot of moving parts that you have to do to maintain. Um, I would love to do something like that. Yes, that'd be wonderful. Um, what I'm doing now personally in my spare time, I'm writing a book. So that's oh, something that I'm you. doing. Um, I, what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the parent, well, actually taking a lot of the paranormal experiences that I've had in my life and kind of twisting them up into a kind of like a fantasy world where there's going to be about 10 different stories, but all different, 10 different stories kind of wrap into each other one way or the other. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. That's my, my next uh, project that'll hopefully be out, uh, by, I would say the middle of next year, I would hopefully get that out. Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling, I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I'm feeling the need to ask you Please. about horror. Yeah. Um, we're just coming out of the Halloween season. I'm a, a, from, from the time I was a little boy, I'm a big horror movie buff. If you walk mm -hmm. into my living room, it's wall to wall, ceiling to floor, collectible mm -hmm. cult horror movie posters from mm -hmm. you name it. Yeah. Um, favorite horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be uh, reason it can be classic it could be you know uh, cheesy cheesy b <laughs> okay so i will say this my favorite horse movies will have to be in the mood that i'm in for instance if it's during the day and i want to see a movie that's kind of horrorish but i don't want to really get into like the whole you know too much of it i'll watch jaws jaws is my favorite all-time movie i mean i grew up with that movie it's just, it's unbelievable. Um, as far as others is concerned, I, it's hard. It's hard for me to, to, to it's really. Hard, it is. People ask me it that really all the time is. and I can, I can't do it. Yeah, I, I say, just walk into my living room and go eat me, eat me, mo, <laughs> or whatever poster your finger lands on. Right. Um, if I want to watch something classic, let's say I'll go with Dracula, the old original black and white Bela Lugosi Dracula, or I'll go with, um, another one is, um, what is it called? 
Uh, I just wrote an article about it. Freaks. Um, another one. Um, it's yeah, an old black and white it. film. <laughs> it's a great film. I yeah. mean, you talk about circus freaks that are actually in a film. I mean, back in the 30s. I mean, that's phenomenal. You don't get no better than that. I'm going to say on this page right here, you've got two fantastic films that I, one oh, of them yeah. I loved when I was a kid, and that's right here, The Hitcher. Oh, I loved the Hitcher. The Hitcher. Oh, yeah. the original, original Hitcher. One. Yeah. I loved yeah. that. Rutger Howard? When I was a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, of course, um, the one of the best movies, the best duos of all time, Shaun of the Dead, <laughs> right there, buddy. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. That is my I, I, name I, in many circles. <laughs> Shot of the Dead. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's actually a good one. You know, it's funny. I actually just recently showed that film to um, some family members, and it still holds up to this day. They're like, oh, they yeah. never saw it. They were like, I've never seen this film. I was like, yeah, it's a great film. Check it out. And they're like, this is good. <laughs> Did you so, know yeah. that Simon Pegg, uh, uh, he appeared as a zombie in Land of the Dead? He oh, I didn't know Romero that. Romero, no, really. Romero loved that movie. He asked yeah. him if he wanted to be a zombie in Land of the Dead. So he's in the basement in that place where they're having the zombies fight in the ring and oh, he's okay. actually chained up to the to the cage to the cage uh, and okay. if you know it's him you can tell it's him but it's just you know <laughs> it's just funny that he would be he would appear as a zombie in that movie I yeah know, i i, I would say that. the only thing that you're missing here is young frankenstein uh yeah. that's that's one that you know it's i mean classic. that is that is a classic classic yeah. so yeah that is and that's probably the reason why i originally started watching everybody loves raymond because um peter boyle plays the father right and i love right. young frankenstein so much that's why i started watching everybody oh god loves putting raymond. on the ritz yeah oh my god <laughs> Put it on the ritz. Ritz. <laughs> Yeah. Well, for me, my first introduction into horror films was not so gentle. Let me just tell you, um, you know, my mom, you know, God rest her soul again. Uh, you know, she used to work a lot. And um, there was a period of time where, you know, my dad was out of the picture and stuff like that. So there's a lot of time being home and, you know, there's a lot of rental movies at the time, you know. Um, and so my first introduction was Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one and the original Evil Dead. And so from that point uh. on, I was just like, all right. <laughs> Oh. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Yeah. My, I, I used to sneak out of my bedroom in the middle of the night and crawl yeah. into the living room. And back in the day, these TVs, you could always put headphones in, the little yeah. tiny the transistor radio headphones. There was always a yep. place to plug them in the TV. And I'd watch mm -hmm. all the old universal horror movies, but they would scare me so bad. My parents always knew I did it because they'd wake up in the morning, I'd be in bed with them. Oh, yeah. They, so they know. He obviously they snuck knew. out, watched a scary <laughs> movie, and well, listen, yes, brother. Allison, old Twilight Zone, very true, very scary. Absolutely. Yes, yes. yes, um, yes. Whenever I hear Twilight Zone, I think of the the movie and the opening scene where they're playing that Creedence Clearwater song, oh, Midnight yeah. Special, and Aykroyd yep. and the comedic actor, uh, I forget mm -hmm. his name, um, a famous comedic actor. They're driving in the car and they play that Turn the Lights Out. Mm -hmm. Want to see mm -hmm. some scary stuff? That's, that's classic stuff. <laughs> anyway, brother, before we get cut off here, you yeah. know I love you. You know I respect you. Too, you. I'm not mm -hmm. done with you. You, I'll be right. throwing dates at you. I think I'm Anytime. pretty much booked up to the end of the year. Probably throw some dates at because I still have a ton of stuff I want to talk to you about. So plenty. I'll Let's have you it. back next year. Um, you ever need me to come on? Let me know. Yes. Just give me plenty of advance notice. We'll, we'll work something out. But. Okay. We're on the prayer list. I pray for you all Thank the time. you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations really on all your success. All right. If you ever need him to come on, you need to find <laughs> new guests. I mean, let's be. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, though. I'll, yeah, I'll, be, a, I'll be a stand in guy. You know, somebody <laughs> drop out. I'm never, I'm always home. So if you get oh, somebody awesome. cancel at the last minute, you need somebody to jump on, give me a I call appreciate and it. let me know. Thank you. Have Thank a you, great, really great remainder to your Friday evening. Thank you. A great weekend. I love you. Feel brother. better. You All right. right Take on. care. Talk to you soon, man. Uh, William Smith, Dark Fringe Radio. Will Smith, Dark Fringe Radio. Um, United States Old Catholic Church. Go to their website, usocc.org or bishopjameslong.com. You'll find the link to night prayer. You'll find the link to, to uh, Bible study if you're interested in that stuff. There's also a United States Old Catholic Church clergy and parishioners Facebook page. If you're looking for a church community that no judgment, we accept everyone, check the page out. You can join there and hang out with us and see if it's for you. Um, 
Thank you to Zach and Adrian Clayton. Congratulations on the new grandchild, Zach Feel Better. They're my co-producers. I couldn't do the show without them because I'm totally computer illiterate. Go to Zach's website. Or actually, yeah, it's his website, communitypayitforward.us. Communitypayitforward.us. Just go there and be pleasantly surprised. Help some people. Next week's guest, Monday, this Monday. You all know or you all love her. The 13th, the Joy to the World monthly series with my special co-host, Joy Pugh. Dr. Joy Pugh will be here this Monday. You can still find me on Facebook at Lawrence Morais. I hope everybody enjoyed the Eli Roth Presents the Legion of Exorcist marathon yesterday on Travel Channel. I still have no word on a season two. Soon as I know, you all will know. Thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Scientific Paranormal Inspection Research Investigation Team, Spirit. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT. Little P, capital A-C-T, podcasting for all coming together channel for all of these networks simulcasting my show. God bless you all for that. I love you all. I don't have a show without you all. So thank you all for tuning in. You're all on the prayer list. And yes, be careful out there this winter. COVID's trying to make a big comeback. And if you've already got it, I'm going to say a massive prayer for humanity versus COVID when we get done with the show here. So it's bad joke time. I'm going to say a bad joke that one of you sent in. And I'm going to pull it out of this haunted carnival barker hat. Okay, here we go. What's the best name for a man who can't stand? Neil. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace.